Hello, good morning. I'd like to welcome you once again to join me on this journey of faith. This is Fix Your Eyes on Jesus. So we are going to read, we are going to read a scripture from the book of Psalms 34, and we are going to start from verse 17. The Bible says, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Praise God. And then we are going to read Isaiah. Isaiah 53 and verse 4 to 5. Isaiah 53. The Bible says, Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one submitted by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. Praise God. And finally, Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication for my vindication by my God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. They will be called oaks of justice planted by the Lord to show his glory. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, with thanksgiving, we honor you, we praise you, we worship you, we enthrone you, we glorify your holy name, King of Kings. We acknowledge your faithfulness, your mercy, your grace, your power, and your presence. Welcome your presence, Lord. We pray that you may teach us something new from your word that is going to help us to grow more in the knowledge of you, to be transformed from inside out, to have our mind focused on you, our hearts, our eyes fixed on you. And that you may glory for yourself about the situation and circumstance of our life. For our own good and for the good of glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. So, we are looking at a scripture here that um, is going to guide us to the heart of Jesus, to the heart of God. And in the heart of God, because God is love, in the heart of God is the fullness of love. So we started by reading a scripture that reminds us a very important message that the Lord wants us to know and to hold on so dearly to. He says that there are two places where he dwells. One is in heaven, in holiness, and the other place that is named in the Bible is in the heart of the rejected and hmm, the crushed of spirit. In the heart of the crushed. So his intention is to restore. To restore that brokenness to the original position. We have read in the book of Isaiah that is a mission that the Lord was assigned and with him to do. And whatever he begins, he fulfills. He never leaves anything undone. So when he begins... Then he finishes what he begins and he does it in a wonderful way. I'm just looking at another different translation. This is a Holy Bible, standard version. And it says, uh, Isaiah 57, verse 15, it says, it says, for that says, the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place. And also with him who is of contrite and humble heart, 
to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. So the message that the Lord wants to give us is to remind us something that is very important. He wants to remind us that he is not just close to those who are broken, like we just read in Psalms 34, that the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. He's not just near, he desires to dwell in our hearts. And so that means in any um, kind of brokenness, any kind of brokenness of heart, any kind of bro brokenness of spirit requires the Lord to heal. And that is why we read the scripture that says that he came to heal the brokenhearted, to restore us into our original position. Remember, according to the book of Colossians 1.19, the Bible says that the fullness of everything was pleased to dwell in Jesus. And verse 16 says that, Colossians 1.16, that it is only in him that everything was created. Everything exists in him, for him, through him. So that means in exclusion of him, then that fullness cannot be. And then in exclusion of him, that brokenness cannot be healed. So the first step to know and to hold on to and to believe is the fact that any kind of brokenness can only be healed, formed, pleated in Christ. Now, if this is the mission that Jesus came for, it is true that he knows that um, it is very, very important for us to have him in our hearts, to be united with him and to be conscious of this fact, because any kind of brokenness, when it comes to us, it tends to pull us away from the only one who can actually heal us. It can be, um, the root cause can be anything. It can be anything, but the nature of it tries to pull us away from him. But the only way we can be restored is when we are in him and he is in us. It is when we are conscious of it, then we know that when that brokenness happens, it could, that comes to separate us from Jesus, then we know that we have to run back to him, that we have to seek him, that we have to repent, that we have to open that door in our hearts. Uh, Revelation 3.20 says that I stand at the door and knock and whoever opens the door, I come in. So he desires to dwell in our hearts. He just doesn't want to be close or near. He desires to dwell in our hearts because he has a mission to accomplish. He has a mission to fulfill. Now, when the Lord is talking like this, he's also guiding us to one other aspect in our lives, that if God is love, lack of that love, when that love is missing, there is brokenness. When that love is, is present, then there is restoration. So his love comes to heal us and to restore us to our original position, to our original relationship with him, to our original um, position in him, if we are created in him, through him, and for him. But when we are not united in that way, brokenness happens. It could happen because of sin or our natural um, human inclinations or desires. It can be anything. So if this is the case, the Lord is revealing to us. And then we just read uh, from the book of Isaiah 53, a very interesting scripture that talks about how um, it was our infirmities that Jesus bore, that our sufferings he endured. And he endured because he had the capacity to and he had a mission to accomplish so much of the sufferings and the pains that we hold on to, much of the brokenness that we hold on to, we don't need to hold on to it because there is the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. And then verse 5 tells us, He was pierced for our offenses, for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. So by his stripes, we were healed. That is past tense. And I like to think about it and to keep it that way in past tense. Because see, while we were still sinners, Jesus died. Before we got here, he had already died. So that means any time in this life that we, we find ourselves in need of his saving grace, it is already present. It is already waiting for us to receive 
So that means we have to work on ourselves to be open to receiving, to be able to know that it is available and to be able to receive it. And on the other hand, he's already been glorified. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He is the mighty God, the Most High God. So he's already been glorified. But remember, other than being the King of Kings, he is the suffering King. He suffered and he went through all the pain, the brokenness and the crushing and everything to get to where he is to the throne. And he did not do it for himself. He did it for us. So whatever it is that we could be holding on to, whatever it is that we could be um, going through when we are separated from him has already been reconciled. So it is wisdom for us to know that and to open our hearts to receive that which he has already accomplished. So that is why the Bible says that by his stripes we were healed. So whatever form of brokenness that can come to us. And the first thing that will show up will be all kinds of negative thoughts and ideas, you know, anything that tends to separate us from God, from Jesus, who we have already been reminded that he is near, he's close to those who are broken. And before Jesus left after uh, resurrection, what did he say? I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then he says in Psalms 46 verse 1 and 2, the Lord is our refuge, a present help at every time of need. And then David again said in Psalms 130, from the deaths I cry to you, O Lord, answer me. So he actually acknowledges that the Lord answers him from his deaths. From the deaths I cry to you, O Lord, and you answered me. So what are we talking about? You're talking about Jesus who is present. Jesus who already um, accomplished the work of salvation. However, when do we go through this kind of brokenness and then it tends to separate us from him when we don't know that he has already finished the work. So when we believe and we receive it by opening our hearts to the king. So he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and kind of heart. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. When you open, I will come. That is Revelation 3.20. He says he wants to come in and dwell in our hearts. You see what kind of brokenness, uh, that kind of brokenness that seems to shut the Lord out of our hearts. Why? Because when we go through through painful situations or things that we do not uh, understand, we tend to hold on so dear to them and we shut him out of our hearts to worry too much, to get burdened by them too much, to hold on to them too much. But he says, let go, lay them down, let him come and help us. He says, what is it that is denying us peace? He said to his disciples, in this world, you will have troubles, have peace in me. I have overcome the world. So every situation that comes our way doesn't just, it is not designed to come and rob us away, rob that peace in our hearts away. It might seem like it, but as long as Jesus died for us, then he has given us the grace that we need to hold dear to his word and believe that this word is for us to be accomplished. When we believe it, then we receive it. So we hold on dear to that word and we follow the stripes that he has given us and we are bound to receive what he has already promised. There is no heart that can be healed, restored to fullness if the Lord is not involved. Medicine cannot do that, you know. It is a broken heart. A broken heart can only be healed and restored with the presence of the Lord. And the presence of the Lord brings the fullness of who he is. He knows how to heal a broken heart, is to pour out his love into that heart. So for us to receive that love, it means to open our hearts to him, to believe that when we call on him, he can hear us. When we call on him means that even through that painful moment, through that valley, you see, David said, even though I walk in the valley of the shadow, of it is a shadow. It is not the truth. So he said, even though I walk, so uh, it depends on how long we want to remain in that valley, just like the Israelites in the wilderness. But when we know this scripture, then we declare it that 
in the valley is where we get, we are meant to experience his redeeming grace. Not when we come out the other side. In fact, we need him to bring us out of that valley. So that means while still the pain or the brokenness is going on, as long as he has said that he's coming to bring comfort, he wants to dwell in that heart. He is already designed to bring wholeness and restoration. Then when we call on him, call unto me and I will answer you, the Lord says, you know, and when we call on him, he will always answer us. So we do not wait or think too much about the situation to call on him, even as as dark, as broken others, as that situation can be, then we need to be assured that he will always answer us, that he is willing and ready. That is the mission that Jesus came to do. That is what he has already accomplished. It is a finished work of the cross. It is a finished work. That means that we cannot live in that kind of brokenness when the Lord is here to release his healing touch. Just look at the life of Jesus. You know, it is very interesting because even when he walked the earth, we see that he is the one who was going and healing all those who are broken, those who needed healing, even those who are who needed inner healing, physical healing, physical touch. I mean, he just healed all of them. And this is the nature of who God is. So whenever there is that need of that healing, whenever there is that brokenness, he can feel it to the core because he's already gone through brokenness of some sort in a deeper way so that we can be redeemed. That is the intention. He went through pain, he went through brokenness, he went through affliction so that we don't have to go through what he went through. So we can shorten the time that we have to go through stuff. We can shorten the, the time that we have to go through some of these things by laying them down at the foot of Jesus and allowing his love to flow into us by being um, by being able to pour out our hearts to him, by talking to him, even when we can't pray, by laying down everything, everything to him. You see, when we talk to um, uh, people, you know, just think of a counseling session, you know, it is all about talking about everything, every area, everything, every struggle, every challenge without even minding um, of the other person because already for a person to go to a counseling session, they are already willing and ready to share whatever struggle they are going through. Now, the master counselor is Jesus. The master healer is Jesus, the healer of broken hearts. So when we seek him through any form of brokenness, then his intention, as he has spoken in the scripture that we just read here, is to restore that heart. You see, he says, on high I dwell and in holiness. And with the crushed and dejected in the spirit to revive the spirits of the de dejected and to revive the hearts of the crushed. His intention is one, to restore that broken heart, to restore that broken heart to its original position. And nobody can do that, only him. He has all the power. He has everything because you are created for him, in him, and through him. And how does he do that? He does it by pouring in his love and coming in our hearts to dwell and to cause that restoration to happen. It is not possible if we do not allow him to, you know, we have a choice to make. If we allow him, that means we are opening our hearts and pouring out all the pain, pouring out all the struggle, whatever it is that we hold on dear that is not from him. We pour out everything and no matter how painful it is, that is how he will cleanse that heart. That is how he's, he's going to cleanse that brokenness. And then once it is cleansed, his love is flowing in because he will heal it by the power of his love. And when he is finished, it will actually look like the original that he created. You know, that image he restores to the image and the design that he had before, like what we read in Psalms 139. 
So it is important to remember these things. He is on a mission. His mission is like we read in Isaiah 61. To heal the brokenhearted is one area and one assignment that he has. So that means there is no broken heart, no broken person that he will not be near to. And we have read the Bible reminding us that he is near. He is so close. If we can only recognize how close the Lord is, if we can only recognize how how much he desires to heal our brokenness. If we can only recognize and believe that Jesus came to heal our brokenness, we cannot hold on to any pain or any brokenness. Then we'll be able to lay it down. And how do we lay it down? It is to accept that we are going through this thing. We are not meant to live in it. We are not meant to dwell in it. But it is in the valley we are going through. But remember David said that in the valley, your rod and your staff to comfort me was present. So that means when we know that we are meant to walk through it, then we can let go of it and we know who the Lord is. We know what he came to do. We know what his assignment is for us. We know what he has already been through, that he was afflicted for us, pierced to ease our pain. Then we cannot hold on to that which is not ours. He did not create us to hold on to pain. He did not create us to hold on to any kind of affliction. It happens, yes, because we are human yes we are in this world yes but when it does we just have to lay it down at the feet of jesus we bow down we acknowledge that we can do nothing without him you see worship is something else it is acknowledging that we can do nothing without him acknowledging that we are not able to manage even our lives without him that we cannot hold on to pain we don't even know what to do with it if the lord does not heal us then we cannot be healed if he does not restore us we cannot be restored because he is the king the lord who is a restorer of broken hearts brokenness any kind of brokenness you see worship worship before the lord is acknowledging that he is worthy of our worship it is only a broken heart that can offer that wonderful worship to the lord think about mary magdalene think about the samaritan and it is only that kind of brokenness that will allow us when we open our hearts it will flow the worship will flow unceasingly and nothing can hold it back nothing can hold it back because that is how we are united with him that is how the soul that he created and put in us is united with him you know it is through that brokenness acknowledging and accepting that whatever is needed to cause that brokenness to be restored is hidden in Jesus. So when we lay down with humility before the King of Kings, acknowledging that he's our creator and he has that which we need and the restoration, he cannot even withhold it. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? Jesus could not withhold power from flowing from him to the woman. Because you see, the woman had faith that what she needed, Jesus had. She did not even want to be seen or known. She only wanted to touch the hem of his garment. What if today you and I could do the same thing? That when we go through any kind of brokenness or pain or any kind of affliction, that we lay it down at the feet of Jesus. Acknowledging that what we need, he has. He has already gone through this. He has already finished this work. So we are not meant to carry it. We are not bound to hold on to it. It does not belong to us. And we lay it down at his feet in worship and acknowledging that he is faithful because it is in his word. We have already read that he has that assignment, his assignment. He is our God. He took it very seriously. He did not do it from far. He came to our level. Jesus always comes to our level. So whatever level that you could be going through, whatever painful moment, situation, struggle that you could be going through, just be assured that Jesus always comes to our level. He comes to remind us 
us that he understands. He comes to remind us that he's close to us. He comes to remind us that he's our present help at every time of need, meaning even that need. He comes to remind us that whatever we need, he is ready and willing to give us. So the Bible says, and Jesus taught his disciples, call unto him and he will answer. He's not a God who never hears. He created the ear so he can also hear. His hand is not too short to save. His ear is not deaf to hear. He can hear our cry and he will always answer our prayers. There's a scripture that is in Psalms 56 and it is in verse 8 that says, You have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in thy book? He keeps a record of our tossings and he puts our tears in his bottle. That means there's no tear that is lost. It means he can see, he can hear. He is a God who is merciful and compassionate. Now, the challenge is to trust him. Well, we have to hear the words so faith can arise from within. And then he says, test and see that the Lord is good. Test him and see that is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should speak for sin. He is a promise keeper. His promises are tried and true. His promises are tried and true. So we can trust him. Trust him with what you are going through. Trust him with that challenge. Trust him for healing and restoration. He's a faithful God. So with this conviction in our hearts, we are going to pray that the Lord will do what only he can do. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord. We come before you as we offer our hearts to you. Lord, I pray for all the listeners of this podcast, wherever they are, whatever it is that they could be going through, whatever pain, brokenness, struggle, whatever it is that has taken them into that valley. Lord Jesus, the Bible says that we are meant to walk out of the valley. I command them to walk out of the valley in faith and trusting that whatever we need, you have. Whatever we desire, you have already promised. The work of the cross has already been accomplished. It is for us to receive, Lord. We surrender our hearts to you. I pray, Lord Jesus, for the grace to let go and let you take control. To do what you said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, that we come to you, or that everybody who is heavy laden should come to you and lay down our burdens, so that we can take and receive your love, your healing power to flow through us. Let your healing power flow into the heart of every broken heart. The Lord, they may be restored for the greater glory of your name and for their own good. Thank you, Jesus. There is nothing you cannot do. Oh, Lord, we place our trust in you, Lord. We magnify you. We glorify you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness. Be glorified. Be magnified. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.